to the Demon Slayer Gaming Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. We're going to be taking a look at Zelfatal. Throughout the first area, there will constantly be circular AoEs from random falling rocks that you'll just want to avoid. The Hakulaks do have large cone AoEs that you'll want to keep them facing away from the party to avoid. If the units get caught in the falling rocks, then it gives them a vulnerability debuff, increasing the amount of damage your team will do to them. The Harpias will occasionally cast Wings of Woe, which is another large circular AoE you'll want to move out of. For the first boss, he does have a tank buster ability, which is called short bursts. So you'll just want to occasionally pop tank cooldowns to reduce the amount of damage from this. His wind blast is a large line AoE that would just need to be moved out of. When he casts lift, he will summon additional adds into the fight. You will want to kill the floating turret first. After the turret reaches 0 HP, it'll start casting hot air. During this time, you'll want to position yourself under the boss so that when you get knocked into the air, you knock him out of his lifted section. When he summons the air stones that tether to him, you'll want to focus these down. Long burst will apply a wind damage over time on a unit that would just need to be cleansed by your healer. The next group of units will have quite a few frontal cone AoEs that you'll just want to move out of. Avoid standing on the outside of the platform where the spikes are. The Fate Callers will be a few magic casters that you'll, you can either interrupt or just wait for them to come to you between casts. After the units are dead, you'll want to pick up the Bronze Key to open up the Imposing Gate and then wait for everyone to get on the lift to access the lift lever. For the second boss, everyone will want to stand in the center of the arena to avoid the spike pit on the outside. On low will be a frontal cone that you'll want to just move out of. On high is a party-wide AoE that will knock everyone away, so you'll want to position yourself in front of one of the barriers to not get knocked into the 
outside area. When one of your party members receives the mark, they will want to move away from everyone else as this will drop a continuously damaging AoE on the ground that you'll want to avoid standing in. Swift Feather will cause the next on low ability to be cast almost instantly. You want to preemptively move away from the boss when he's casting Swift Feather so that the on low will miss. You cannot dodge this by moving left or right. For the last on high, you'll want to position yourself in front of the barriers that do not have any of the AoEs in front of them. The next area will have adds that are already on the platform along with ones that will constantly spawn out of the war balloon. The longer the war balloon is alive, the more adds you will receive, so you'll want to focus down the war balloon to limit the amount of adds you get. There will be several frontal cone AOEs you'll want to watch out for during this time also. When those units are dead, you'll want to pick up the air stone to access the tailwind relic to move to the second area. Again, in this area, there will be more war balloons that you'll want to focus down. The hornbills will occasionally throw out circular AoEs that you'll want to avoid. This one will have two war balloons, so make sure that you're moving from one balloon to the other to pick up all of the adds. After the adds are dead, pick up the airstone again to access the next Tailwind Relic. The Skycaller is a spellcaster who does have interruptible abilities. The main one you will want to watch out for is Tornado. The Ixel Arrow 2 is a line AoE that can just be moved out of. For the final boss, there will be many AoEs that you are wanting to watch out for. Ixel Arrow will just be a single target tank buster on the tank. Ixel Arrow 3 will be party wide AoE that will need to be healed through. When you cast Hawk, everyone will want to spread out to avoid the amount of damage that you're getting hit by. Pixel Arrow 2 is a line AoE you'll just want to move out of. When you cast Hawk the second time, you'll want to group up to mitigate the amount of damage that's done to the marked target. About halfway through the fight, he will cast Summon Garuda. Garuda will be untargetable and just casting AoEs in the middle of the platform. So you'll want to position yourself oh, out of these AoEs while also far enough away to avoid the next Hawk ability. Just continue repeating these mechanics and dodging the AoEs for the rest of the fight. You should be able to take this boss down without a problem. And this should be it for Xyphotal. I hope this helps everyone out. If it does, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.